Hey, what's going on? It's the Diz Uncultured Swine Podcast. I got L Spikes interview part due. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on? Doing all right? Doing good, man. I got you back. I thought I was going to wait a couple of weeks, but uh, I think we, you know, we decided that getting you on right now is a perfect time. Um, I, I didn't give you a full on intro, though. Let's, let's go ahead and give you a full on intro. L Spikes, Atlanta Metro musician, yes, R&B. Yes. 80s sound, dance. 80s. 80s, 80s the 80s funk, man. The 80s <laughs> R&B. You can't, it's a most timeless death. sound. Most death. Most death. Can't, I can't get enough of it. I, yeah, I, I can't it. either. I love it. You know, and I, I I just sometimes just go in a time capsule and just float, man, through it and listen to the different various of artists. I just can't get enough. Yeah, I'm the same way, man. I, I like I, I told you in the first interview, I was like, you're basically gonna be listening to music that you listened to as a kid, and you're gonna hold on to that. You're not necessarily gonna be open to the newer music, although some of the mu new newer music's decent, but I still find myself gravitating toward 80s and 90s because that's that's the time frame when I grew up. You know right. what I mean? Right. Most so, definitely. So I it's a timeless sound. I feel like music was better, uh production was better. Um, as you agree, and it was just a better, more original sound. So. Oh, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. But I'm happy to be back, man. I'm happy to be back. I appreciate it, man. And, and I know the first interview, the audio was a little kind of quirky, but I just want to kind of go over a couple things that we did in the first interview um, okay. as far as the questioning. So question one, I think a lot of people want to know, what got you into this music thing? Well, basically, you know, it all started with band back in high school, man, really from – uh, elementary, middle school, and high school. You know, I went through the different stages of levels of learning how to play instruments. So, you know, that's one of the goals. I was a percussionist at heart. Yeah. Uh, the, the growth uh, was to learn how to play trombone. But all of this originally happened in band. And yeah. when I was in band in high school, I formed a band itself, titled the Source Band. Right. And we uh, got the opportunity to get together, do talent shows, you know, do a lot of running around the city, gigging and stuff like that. And of course, you know, there was other bands out there, man, and other groups out there that was hitting just as well as we were. But right. at the same time, it was just a fun time to create and play those cover tunes and, and sing those type of songs. The people would really enjoy the time. Yeah, I can. I, I mean, I can imagine you as young L Spikes uh, doing all this stuff. <laughs> Uh, just kind of get a visual. I have to look at some pictures of you, you want, off the uh, off the camera. I want to look at young L Spikes and compare them to today. <laughs> well, um, this, this right here wasn't on that color at the time. <laughs> I was just gonna say, probably looked a little different. <laughs> yeah, probably less salt and pepper, more more pepper. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so what projects have you done? Like, I'm not gonna talk about the recent projects, but what's give me a, a taste. Not necessarily a playing it necessarily. We'll do that later. But tell me some about some something about your earlier projects that you've done, like over the co last couple, maybe three or four years. Is there anything in particular that you've done that stands out? Uh, basically, uh, I recorded this uh, love ballad title "I" uh, that was uh, recorded uh, actually when I just first uh, got back into it. Actually, in twenty twenty uh, was my yeah. sit down. Uh, period for me to really start focusing on me as an artist again because I was out there managing artists, uh, managing uh, stage plays. I was yeah. involved with a lot of things. And I had thought about when COVID came around, I thought about it and I said, you know, I need to blow the dust off of what I have and go back into it and, and figure out what I want to do. So I was the first selection that I started off to record in the studio with. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Sam Haygood, as well as House Rock. I worked with those two producers, and that's how I came about that song. I, um, after that, I think I came up with another tune. Uh, I think it was uh, I Need Your Love. Yeah, I Need Your Love. I Need Your Love? One. Yeah, man, that one there, man. I, I talked about that one, too. That's an 80s. Both of them are 80, 80 written songs, but, man, yeah. uh, that that type of sound, uh, beat tempo, is. Uh, just, just hearing all the Latin instrumentation, that's pretty much what I was trying to bring to the table in that song right there. But overall, those were the first two that I really kicked it out with. 
Yeah, because I mean, you've been doing, you just explained, you've been doing music for a long time. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to know the time frame that you got back into it most recently. And I, I like to yeah. call it COVID soul because yeah. COVID yeah. gave a lot, people a lot of opportunity to get creative again, right? Because there's nothing else to do. Right. Most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, I, I take it back a little further because I got into the uh, managing uh, business. Whew, uh man, I would say almost. 25 years ago. Wow. And artists. Um, yeah, it's been a long journey. But that, 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 that took the time with COVID hit. I just, you know, I'm going to throw in the towel. Right. He <laughs> throw was in like, the towel and, and focus on myself. Yeah. I mean, you went from management to now you're like, you want to be an artist because you probably already, you know, back in the day, you know, this is what you did. You played in a band. You played the trombone. Right. Well, I was, I was in the process of learning the trombone. My second uh, phase was bass guitar. So, Percussionist, yeah. uh, going to the phase of trombone and bass and bass guitar. So, so yeah, you're you're an actual musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's my that's my my, my three loves right there. Right. No, no. That's the thing what got me kind of triggered about the uh, trombone was a slide because I was always wondering yeah. how did that thing you know it looks come cool in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I had to give it up to um, some of the trombone players that was in the business back in the day. Um, there, there were a lot of bands that had trombones, uh, horn sessions and things like yeah. that, man. So they, they was killing it, man. Killing so it's it. like time to go to another instrument, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it happens like that. Uh, no, yeah. that's good. So you went from playing, you know, as far as just leisurely and then getting into the management business, like you said, for 25 years. And then when COVID hits, like, you know what? I'm going to take a crack at this artist thing. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, uh huh. So quick question. We were talking about it at work. You're you're really starting to focus on putting these albums out right now. What, what do you got out currently that you're that you're working on? Uh right now I just released a uh, new version of the I dance groove. Okay. Next this is a dance piece, you know, the groove to the step to just the cruise to just the yeah, yeah, yeah. groove, you know. So that's one of the new uh singles I have out right now. Yeah, and I already know the question. I already knew the answer to that. I'm just doing it for the people that are actually watching and listening. But yeah, I, I've been catching it all the time on YouTube, sending comments and likes. And uh, <laughs> you know, I got to get back on there because you're putting you're putting so much stuff so quickly that I got to catch up, man. I've been busy <laughs> the last couple of days. I got to go back on YouTube after I'm done with this and start listening to some more stuff and start liking and making comments and because okay. you know, I really enjoy your sound. So, um, so you got some things coming up. It's a lot of dance grooves, like you said. Something to step to. Well, Right, yeah. right, right, right. Most definitely, I do have uh, another selection uh, coming pretty much by the end of December or the beginning of January. We come to party. That's my next single. Come Bring to party. The, we come to party. Bring it into the new year. Okay, yeah. that's nice. So that, that's going to be another one, and then I'm going to be on to the album. So I'm going to let everybody enjoy these singles as well as the L Spikes Feel Good music yeah. album. Let them enjoy that, and look forward to the main ingredient. Second. <laughs> right. And so 2025 is going to be a big year for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting in work. Yeah. Putting in work. I did start um, L Spikes. Um, I call it um, Fun Sessions with L Spikes. I saw uh, that. Done, uh, a few of those videos just to kind of give the background of how these songs come about, uh, how uh, I've uh, been able to, you know, actually sing them so that people can know, oh, that's him singing. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm doing that and also giving bloopers at the end of the videos as well. That's important. People <laughs> want to see those things. They, they know you're human. They want to see the the outtakes and things that you make make mistakes on. That's what makes you get better, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. So where, more importantly, out of all this, where can we find your music? Okay, I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, uh, iRadio, iHeartRadio, I'm trying to say, um, YouTube oh, wow. music, uh, TikTok music, Facebook music. I'm on all the uh, streaming. So you're everywhere. Oh yeah, oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. No, I think it's kind of cool though that you um you're on the iHeartRadio. Is that like the XM stuff? Uh, possibly, but you know, it, it, it's um uh, a bigger uh, lane Than to that. Uh, get into. Okay. As far as you know, regular radio play, right? Know, you're in a radio lineup, you know, 
that, that thing that's awesome with the iHeart Radio. Yeah, that's why I was like going to yeah. say that's probably a little bit better to release it on there than as opposed to like regular radio. Probably got a little bit more exposure. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it all, it all depends how you, how your money is fooling with the big boys. <laughs> Well, that's what I was going to say. It's going to be hard to compete with some of these folks, but as you get more popularity and more endorsements and you get a little bit more capital mm -hmm. to do a little bit more and compete with a lot of these guys with these large budgets, you know, all of a sudden, yeah. you know, it's a level playing field. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, um, I, I, I kind of, you know, like the independent way to do it. You know, I like to just put it out there and go with it my own way. Uh, I understand, you know, people uh, have a certain calendar and dates when they release as the industry releases, I I, I don't kind of release like that. You know, I, I just, like I said, I just released together about, about three and a half months ago, which is a uh, line dance. Then I just came up with this one here. So I'm kind of like releasing them as I, you know, yeah. get them done. So that yeah. way people can hear the variety of what I have and knowing, hey, this guy working. You're working and you're working too. Like you're working in two capacities. We got real ass jobs around here too. So people, people need to know that. You know, people know we got bills to pay too. So um, get it in when you can get it in for sure. Um, mm. So we know where to find you, which is basically everywhere. Um, right. You're local to the Atlanta metro area. Are you from this area though? I'm from Atlanta. So you're from Atlanta. Okay. So you're yeah. actually homegrown for sure. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. okay. Yeah. So that's, that's even better. Like you're not, you're like original. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I'm glad, I think this, this podcast will be a little bit better in terms of the audio. So people get to hear your answers better. And okay. um, we're going to do a little, something a little different though. I tell you what, what are you most proud of right now that you've re that you recently released? And I want to hear it. Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely am uh, proud of my new, uh, I, L Spikes, I dance. We need to hear it. Oh, go ahead and hear it. Okay. We need it now. We need to hear it. We. Turn turn it up. Let's let's see it. There we go. All right, tell you what. Say turn the music off and I want to I want to hear a cappella, bro. All right, you want to hear a cappella. Okay, here we Let's go. Do here it. we go. I just want to let you know uh. I'm loving you so oh my Oh shit. Got that 80 sound. I love that. Keep going. Oh, I, I really can't help myself the way you turn me on inside. All right, man. <laughs> so yeah. you sound great, by the way. Um, the reason why I wanted you to do a cappella is to show that one, you're a real musician, and two, the sound, like when you were playing it, it didn't, it, I couldn't hear it fantastically, but I wanted to hear your voice and we can always, you know, I can actually add the music to my outro on my mm -hmm. podcast so we can really hear it. So right, 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 right. That's why I really had you do acapella, but it came out perfect when you did the acapella, you sounded great <laughs> and it gives us an idea of what you sound like. And then of course the actual like audio portion of it, I'll add to my like I said, out to the rest of my podcast when I edit it, so we can right, hear right, it right. too. You know, that so no, that was great. That was great, and yeah. that sound is so distinct. I mean, that eighties R and B, that that the early R and B sound is so distinct. It just kind of like brings back memories. You know, <laughs> exactly. I was a kid. Yeah. I mean, you're a whole ass man at the time, but I mean, I was I was a kid, but I still listened to it. <laughs> I was a baby, hey. but still. <laughs> Well, you know, again, it's all about the uh, the sound. It's all about the substance. I'm trying to say the substance, substance. really, what you want, you know, out of it, and and it just come to life. Yeah, it comes to life, you know. And 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 again, I can't emphasize the fact that we got to hear you a cappella. A lot of people are 
sing in with all these filters and all these, you know, whatever. You don't have nothing yeah. but a regular iPad and a mic right now. Yeah, you know I'm mean? right in front of you. You're yes, right sir. here. There's no filters or all this other shit going on. This is L Spikes. The L Spikes. You're going to sound like this in person. You're going to sound like this in the studio. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. That's important. Yes. Oh, I'll tell yeah. you what, yeah. we're going to do a, something kind of kind of cool, too. You have a lot of influences, obviously. Nobody's going to create music without any type of influence. You have to have some influences, right? Give oh, yeah. me three, four, five mus mus uh, musical artists that have influenced your sound and influenced you as a person. All right, I'm going to start with Larry Graham. Larry Graham. Uh, he... Uh, was a bass guitar player. And uh, he um, did this tune called One in a Million. One in a Million? Yeah, and uh, it was a high release from his album. And uh, he's uh, worked with Prince on different uh, shows and possibly some recordings playing the bass. Okay. Yeah, so I would say Larry Graham. Okay. Uh, I would say Jesse Johnson. From the Who's time, that? from the time, from uh, Morris yeah. Day, yeah, lead guitarist player from the time. Um, okay, man, a lot of people got to understand this guy was cold on yeah. lead, man. I mean, uh, he had an album out, and he did this tune called uh, "What was the name of that tune?" Uh, it'll come to me, but no, you're uh, good. I just want to hear about him. Man, he had he had a lead guitar, man. He, he played the lead guitar. I mean, he actually walked this tune. Baby, can you help me? I think that's the name of it. Can okay. you help me? And man, he was like, ah. I mean, he was killing it, man, to the end of the song, man. I mean, he walked the lead <laughs> out to the damn end of the song, man. Yeah. I was like, so that's one of my favorite cuts from him. Yeah. Um. So that's Jesse Johnson. Yeah. You said how many now? How hmm? many? How many? Give me, give me one more. <laughs> give me one more. Give me one more. Okay. Uh, man. Uh, ooh. Let's see here. I would say uh, you can give me a big time artist. I say, I, I, say yeah. I say Rick James, man. Rick damn James to me, because I mean, like, dude was a monster. Yes, you see what I'm saying? Yes, you know, and and, and, and again, um, he played the lead, he played the bass. I mean, the dude was his cold and uh, guitar speaking up. Uh, the vocals that was was out of this world, man. The, the yes. tunes that he wrote was, was was dynamite, and I just like how he put his production together. So I got to say, hats off to Rick James. Rick James, let me tell you something. Fire and Desire, right? Him yeah. and Tina Marie. Yeah, guy can sing. He could do a lot. He was an actual musician, and I like the fact mm. that you brought up two guys. The first two guys, your influences are not people that people would really know unless they really yeah. in the music. Like yeah, you yeah, easily yeah. could have said Michael Jackson, Prince, and whoever. I'm like, no shit, they're good. But <laughs> you know, like, no shit, they're going to influence somebody. But you, you're bringing people that most people don't know because you follow music. You're a real, real musician, and you know real musicians. And right, you're right. giving these guys credit because a lot of times people don't see the people from behind the scenes. They just see Morris Day, Prince, yeah. Michael Jackson. They don't yeah, know people in the background that are influential in what they're bringing mm -hmm. to the table. So. Yeah. Was that? Rick James. Yeah. Okay, Rick James for sure. Rick James. Um, mm -hmm. I I don't play music because I'm terrible. Um, but I do have favorite artists from the '80s. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, obviously I like rock to Van Halen, all them. But yeah, come on with, it, come on with, come on with. It. Listen, man. <laughs> I'm I, as old as I am. I wasn't really uh, old enough in the early 80s to appreciate the sound. I didn't really appreciate it until I got a little bit older into the 90s. And so that yeah. music was like 10 years old at the time. So mm -hmm. I listened to everything from Van Halen to Motley Crue to Prince yeah. Yeah. and Michael Jackson to Eugene Wilde to New Edition mm -hmm. to, I mean, a lot of folks. Uh, Miles J. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Billy Ocean. <laughs> I mean, Simple Minds. Devo. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. everywhere. I go everywhere. But specific to the sound that you're kind of about, I'm going to kind of go back and kind of tell you who I thoroughly enjoyed and what albums I feel like were extremely 
um, influential and impactful, at least to me. Mm -hmm. um, I will say Huey Lewis in the news. Okay. Um, I would say their sports album really caught on. Um, mm -hmm. There was a um, a song, the Honky Tonk Blues. They had that. They had I Want a New Drug, which is basically, uh, do you remember um, Ray Parker Jr.? Yeah, yeah, Ray Parker Jr. Yeah. So basically he, he got sued for stealing the song for Huey Lewis, but he changed like the tempo and he got <laughs> away from getting sued. But but if you listen to I uh I I um I, I want a new drug yeah from, I remember that. Uh, from Huey Lewis and News it it sounds yeah. just like the Ghostbusters theme. Listen oh, wow. to it; it's actually pretty incredible. Or oh, Hall and Oates, I can't go yeah. for that. Remember I that? For that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tough, right? But if <laughs> yeah. you listen to Billy Jean, Billy Jean has an element of that sound too. Of course, Michael Jackson didn't rip it off; he just changed it. But that Hall and Oates song, I can't go for that actually came out before Billy Jean. So exactly. people don't know these things, but if you go back and listen to that, that's where that sound came from. And he just kind of tweaked it a little bit. So oh, oh, yeah. I don't consider it stealing. I consider if you change a little bit, it just shows you that people get ideas from others. And it's actually a sign of respect, right. not disrespect when you kind of pick, piggyback a sound and say, listen, I love this sound. So I'm going to play it for, again for you, but I'm going to change it to the way I want to do it. So yeah. I don't look at it as stealing. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I would have to say sports from Huey Lewis in the news. I'd have to say Prince's Purple Rain. And there was a, what, what is that other album that he, that he put out with um, a door sign of the times? Uh, possibly. I think sign of the times or sign. Oh, the times is one of the greatest albums of all time where you can actually listen from start to finish. It doesn't get a lot of praise like Michael Jackson uh, thriller doesn't get mm -hmm. bad. doesn't get the, the level of respect that that those albums got, but I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you. I think sign of the times for, from Prince, I think it came out in 87. I think it's better than any album that Michael Jackson put out. And I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this, <laughs> but I thought Prince's album was underrated. I thought it was an underrated album. Um, okay. And I'm going to give you one more album that I feel like from an R&B standpoint was underrated. Um, I, maybe not r and I don't know what it, what it's classify as, but Evelyn Champagne King had an mm. album that came out with Shane. Right. It was in the late seventies. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it was early eighties. Right. I what thought was that? that was an underrated album in terms of the dance sound, you know, that mm -hmm. Donna Summers and that, that time frame. I felt yeah. like that was an underrated sound that kind of brought the seventies into the new, into the new decade of the eighties. If you listen right. to that album, it, it, the sound changed from what it was even a year prior, oh, the wow. sound drastically changed. If you listen to that album, you can, you can hear it. That's a totally different sound that we were accustomed to. Mm. And so that it basically introduced the eight into the eighties dance sound, kind of what you do right now, very similar in sound. Um, and I'll give you one more, actually. I'll give you four. <laughs> so the Gap Band album number yeah, yeah. four. Okay. Gap Band four. Mm -hmm. That what that had what uh, outstanding. It had yeah. um, seasons. I think it's seasons to change. There right, was right. Uh, there was a couple other songs in there. Um, I forgot. I'll tell you, I'm blanking out. But if you listen to Gap Band four. Mm -hmm. unbelievable album completely different from the rest of their albums and they had a distinct sound that changed that 80 it was like it was obviously an 80 sound like if you listen to the one two and three very much 70s and then four which came out i think three years into the 80s 83 yeah. and four, it just kind of dropped completely changed the game and that's yeah. when you know an album is different and an artist is different when the sound changes and all of a sudden everybody's doing that shit you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. um that's those are my personal favorite albums and and uh artists during the 80s. So Huey oh, Loose yeah. in the News, Prince, yeah. Yeah. and Gap Band, and Evelyn Champagne King. Hey, I hear that, man. I hear that. I tell you, uh for us, uh, I would say, you know, I know we spoke about the rock artists, pop yeah. artists, um, probably artists. Um I, I gotta give it up to ZZ Top. Thank you. 
LaGrange, <laughs> legs. Cars, you, everything. You know? Yes. Man, those two guys was cold with it, man. I mean, cold. Yes. Had a and, soulful sound, too. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. And I um, definitely uh, enjoyed how they flipped the guitars with the beard. It was like a, a nice little g gimmick, man. So I, I like that about those guys. Definitely. Stevie and of course, Ray you know, Vaughn? Yeah. I mean, these guys were white dudes, but they had a yeah. rock, but they had a lot of soul in their music. Soulful yeah. sound. Huey Lewis and the News was the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Soul. Man, um, um, there was this band, and I want to get the name, but they did that tune called Jump. Oh. Dun, 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 Van Halen. Dun, dun, dun. That Van Halen right there. Van Halen. So okay, they Van went Halen. from rock Huey Lewis. Yeah, yeah. to yeah, the synth. Right yeah, yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? Man, hey, man, that's it. Jump. That, that was my, my jump, baby. Jump, yeah. Might as yeah. well jump. Yeah, yeah, loved it, man. So, David, that was interesting fact. That was David Lee Ross' uh, last um, album with Van Halen, and then it went to Sammy Hagar, oh. who, who filled in for David Lee Roth when he went solo. Um, so, okay. just fun fact. Um, mm -hmm. I need to upgrade to Zoom Pro. Cause they only give us like 30 minutes. We have like three, three minutes and 38 seconds. I'll have to add that. Um, but uh, Sammy Hagar filled in in 85. David Lee Roth went solo. He did that. I'm a gigolo everywhere I go. It was this weird song, but Sammy Hagar had, I can't drive 55, which everybody was playing. It was yeah. in the movie back to the future. And then Van Halen was like, no, we got to get this guy. And then that's when Van Halen sound kind of changed a little bit but that synthesized that synth that that you know that that jump sound yeah it was different man look here it, hey it was dynamite it, it was, was dynamite but I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you go on this one right here um and i gotta say uh twisted sister we are not gonna take hey, it yes no not gonna, not take, gonna take it, it. <laughs> yes easy man <laughs> So you appreciate all types of music, and I like that. Yeah, man. I think when yeah. you only listen to a, one genre of music, you kind of get stagnant. My kids listen to everything from rap to classical to blues to R&B to mm -hmm. punk, you know, a lot of stuff. The Ramones, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Suicidal Tendencies, Nirvana, the Butthole Surfers. I mean, they listen to everything. <laughs> um, I mean, literally, the Butthole Surfers, that's literally <laughs> the name of their group. Um, that was like... That was like 80s. That was like predating 90s grunge. It came out in the 80s, but that was Seattle. That Seattle sound before Nirvana yeah. came out. Okay. A little known fact. Um, but listen, I, I love talking to you about music. I, I might have to upgrade this thing so we can do uh, you know longer Zoom interviews because I don't know. I think we have a minute 56 left. So yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to cut it too close, bro. It's always a pleasure talking to you, hanging out with you, whether it be on here at work. Um, I'm happy for you. I'm proud of the music that you're doing. And like I said, don't hesitate to hit me up. We can do this whenever you want. Most definitely. Appreciate you now. Most All right, definitely. brother. I'll see you at work, man. Uncultured Swine okay. Podcast, L Spikes, Atlanta Metro musician, 80s funk, dance, all sorts of shit. I'm going to add his music to it to the end of this. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you back shortly. Next time. Yeah. Next time, brother. All right.